Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic are the three types of fitness goals that you can have and how to use them properly to become your very best, most fittest person. Fittest, just not most fittest. Here we go, three types of goals from motivational psychology. Process goals, performance goals, and outcome goals. Let's take a look at what each of the three actually mean. When you are set out to do something, let's say change your fitness in some way, the process goals are actually the smallest types of goals. They're goals like I'm going to make four clean meals today and I'm going to eat them on time properly and finishing them and eating no more, no less. I'm going to go to bed on time today. I'm going to show up to train and actually train with the following training plan. Process goals are goals to execute the daily hour to hour, minute to minute process of becoming more fit. Those are process goals. Now, process goals are very important, but there's a second longer time horizon view of performance goals. If you are eating your meals on time, getting all your training in, getting to bed on time, so on and so forth, you would expect that your fitness improves in some way. And it's good to have goals to make sure that you're on track with that degree of improvement that you think is reasonable. We'll get to the reasonable part later. For example, if you are dieting to lose fat, then maybe once a week or on average over multiple weigh-ins per week, you should be losing like at least a pound to a pound and a half of weight on the scale. That is an example of a performance goal. Yes, the process of eating the meals maybe is going well, hopefully, but you can confirm your process is accurate by having performance goals that reflect it. It's like building a fighter plane. You do all the process of putting in the wrenches in the right spaces and tightening the right bolts and designing the engine. Once that process is complete, you better hope that the plane can break Mach 2. If it can't break Mach 2, it can't fly fast, something is wrong with your process. So the best part about performance goals is to keep your process in check. If you are eating like you're supposed to, you should be losing weight like you're supposed to or gaining it like you're supposed to with what of course is reasonable. If you are training like you're supposed to, you should be getting stronger week to week, month to month, stuff like that. So performance goals can be strength-based, performance-based. They can be, you know, any kind of like, I, I hit a certain volume and certain, uh, my, my reps didn't drop off. I am losing a certain amount of weight. I'm gaining a certain amount of weight. They can even be like my bicep circumference has improved a certain amount. They're measurable. They're objective. They're not what actually get the work done because you could pray and hope that your biceps get bigger and measure them all the time. Measuring your biceps doesn't make them bigger. Training process goals do, but performance goals are nonetheless important because you could have a process you think works. You never check your performance. Months later, you finally check it and you realize like, oh, I actually have been spinning my wheels. Something I'm doing, my process is wrong. So performance goals are next level and they're super important. Now here's the deal. We don't get our biceps bigger to just see a certain tape measurement. It's never really about the performance goals in most cases. It's about that last tier of goals that's the longest time horizon, outcome goals. Outcome goals is what you really want out of the equation. Big end process goals that are major targets of your success. For example, yeah, the process is going well if your performance reflects that you're losing a pound and a half per week but your goal maybe over 10 weeks was to lose 15 pounds. That's your outcome goal. You said to yourself at the beginning of the diet, I'm going to lose 15 pounds in these 10 weeks. Reasonable. That's your outcome. Now, how do you know you're doing it? Well, if every week the process is being executed, the process goals are being met, look, you're well on your way. But how do you know for sure? Well, the performance goals are being checked off every week. You lose about a pound and a half. Awesome. And then at the end of the day, the process goals executing the change, the performance goals keeping you on track, the outcome goals let you know where to go. Simpler example, doing this with your car steering wheel and pressing on the pedals and checking the turn signals and stuff is the process by which you drive to your destination. The performance is, is the speedometer between 60 and 70 or whatever, and look at your clock as, okay, my, my uh, 900 miles away from Seattle right now, great, I'm on time. That's the performance goals, okay? So like if you get to 900 miles away from Seattle like three hours later than you thought, you're like, oh, good God, I'm not gonna make this event that I'm driving my car to Seattle for. But what is the outcome? It's to get to Seattle for that event. But this is the only reason you're doing anything, right? There's no inherent 
big value in this case of just doing, the, you don't get into your garage and you keep your car off and do maybe when you're eight, you don't just turn your wheel and press the pedals. That's fun, but it doesn't get you anywhere. So the outcome goal has to be there in some sense because that's why you're doing all the stuff. The performance goal has to be there because you got to make sure you do it on time and in a judicious manner, but you'll get nowhere fast if you're like, all right, we got to make it to Seattle in nine hours. All right. We're still sitting in our car. The car is not on. You got to turn the car on. You got to do this with the steering wheel and you got to press the pedals to actually make things happen. So there needs to be a flow to your goals. You need outcome goals to direct your efforts, right? And without them, consistent motivation suffers greatly. Just like if you're going to Seattle for a really big concert, the reason you're smashing Red Bulls and doing a whole lot of this, it's not, it's not that fun after six hours, right? Is the motivation of seeing your favorite person in concert, which is of course, for you, the viewer, Billie Eilish, right? You wanna go to a Billie Eilish concert, you love her, and that's the reason, that's what keeps you motivated to actually drive. Just the same way in fitness, you want to be strong. You want to squat 400 pounds for the first time in your life. Now, one, one does not simply squat 400. You got to put five pounds on the bar every time. That's the process. You got to execute the workouts. That's the process. You got to make sure you're gaining, oh, 10 pounds of strength, 15 pounds of strength every month. That's the performance goals. But the outcome goals, like if your goal is to just get stronger and it's very hazy, sometimes motivation can suffer. So I want to gain to where I weigh 210 pounds. I want to squat 400 pounds. I want to lose. I want to do this. I want to look like that. Those outcome goals are very, very good idea to have because they keep you pointed in the right direction all the time. Now, performance goals keep you on track and the process goals power that journey, but that journey has to go somewhere and nothing replaces outcome goals for that. For the performance goals, you need them to keep you on track. Look, process goals power the journey and you have outcome goals to know where you want to end up, but you got to ask yourself the question is, is this powerful process actually getting me to where I need to go. If you have markers of performance along the way, if you have those goals, then it's pretty clear that you're on track or if you're not on track, you alternate the process goals, you change them. So my goal used to be to eat four meals of 750 calories each, but I'm not losing weight fast enough. So now it's gonna be four meals of 650 calories. You could change the process goals in order to hit the performance milestones in order to get to your outcome and not to something else. But here, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this. This is absolutely the truth here. Process goals are the most important because they are what get you the actual results, period. You can wanna lose weight. I wanna lose 15 pounds. If you do, you can measure, you can step on the scale every day, great. And I know people, you know people like this. They wanna lose weight, they step on the scale all the time, they fret about it, and what do they do? They cheat on their diet all the time. You gotta eat the meals and not much more than the meals if you wanna lose weight. If you wanna gain weight, you gotta smash protein and carbs and train really hard, period. And if you don't do that, it doesn't matter if you tell people in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get jacked. And you're like, put a picture of Flex Wheeler on your mirror and you're like, that's the goal, man. If you don't do the work, it's all pointless. On the other hand, someone who eats the meals, does the training, and has no performance goals at all or no outcome goals, not optimal. They could be unmoored and just going off in a weird direction. However, six times, seven times out of 10, they're going in the right direction anyway. Look, if you're smashing food and pumping the weights like crazy, you're gonna get more jacked. You're gonna look more like Flex Wheeler than when you started, period. That's the engine of everything that happens. So process goals are the most important by a long shot. So to succeed, you should have outcome goals. They should be challenging, but realistic. You get no bonus points making unrealistic goals. You, you can tell yourself you wanna be Mr. Olympia. How about this? Mr. Southern Ohio, let's start with that, right? Or actually build a muscular and lean physique first, and then Mr. Southern Ohio, and then Mr. USA, and then Mr. Olympia. How about that, right? So realistic, but challenging. Performance goals are absolutely a good idea and real big fans of having them. For example, shameless plug, the RP Diet app, it tells you your process goals, eat this, eat this, eat that. And then it also tracks your performance to make sure that you're on track so it can change your process for you, but also let you know like, hey, you're doing super well. You pick the outcome at the front end, it doesn't talk to you about the outcome all the time. It really just focuses on process and performance and that performance is critical. So performance, very, very good to make sure you keep it on track. 
performance should be as objective as possible. So like if you if your idea of a performance goal for bodybuilding is just kind of looking in the mirror and be like, yeah, yeah, I think I'm getting more jacked, that's fine. But it should be paired with other more objective measurements. Are you gaining weight or losing weight if you're cutting? Are you getting stronger in the gym over time? That kind of stuff you can't really fudge, right? And then it really keeps you super honest. And the point is not a moral point. You can lie to yourself all you want. You can't lie to the process. If the process is working, the honesty should reflect that it's really doing a good job. If the process goals are not being executed sufficiently, or if they're wrong, right? If you're on a hypocaloric diet where you should be gaining, you're not going to get scale weight. You can't lie to that, right? It keeps you truthful to the very things you think are important, right? They should be performance goals realistic. Big deal. Don't set performance goals that are unrealistic. Like I want to squat. I want to add 20 pounds to my squat every week. What are you talking about? Go with five. And if you really blow that out of the water and it's the easiest thing in the world, next month you can do 7.5 every week and really impress everyone, including yourself. They should be regular. Okay, so performance is not something you test like once during uh, an entire fat loss phase. Okay, you don't like not step on the scale. You're like, I think I'm doing well. I think I'm doing well. And it's a three month fat loss diet. And at week six, one and a half way well, you know, through or half halfway through, you're like, uh, step on the scale and you're like, oh, I haven't lost any weight. Or you step on the scale and you're actually like five pounds already lost more than you wanted. And you're like, oh, holy crap, right? So they should be regular. Like there's no exact number, but regularly spaced and, and relatively often. Now they don't have to be perseverative. They don't have to be like, oh, every hour I check my weight. But you know, check your weight a few times a week. Every week you should get strength measurements for how you're doing, stuff like that. And of course, they should be progressive. Like I perform at X level here, and then you know next week, uh, X plus one or X plus two, so on and so forth. That keeps you on track to get to your outcome because your outcome, hopefully, is a progression from where you started, right? If your outcome goal is exactly where you are already, their performance goals don't need to be progressive. So they need to have all those features to be uh, really, really good. They don't have to be elaborate and super precise. Just the basics work really, really well. But process goals, are the most important because they determine how you live. They literally make the success. Measuring that you benched 300 pounds today doesn't make you better at benching. If you bench 300 but nobody measured it, you know, the tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? By the way, the answer to that question is unequivocal, yes. But backtracking, if you bench 300 but you don't know how much weight is on the bar, it doesn't matter because you either did it or you didn't. It doesn't matter if you know about it. What matters is, did you do the 250 for sets of five? That's what makes you stronger. So the process goals are critical because they're the movers. They're the prime movers, right? If you have a race car that has no speedometer, but you put a baller driver in the shit, he's going to win a bunch of races. Why? Tires, engine, transmission. That's it. Okay, that, the engine is what wins the races, plus the driver, of course. If there's no speedometer, you might make his job harder, but it, it's really way superfluous compared to the motive force behind actually doing stuff. So invest most of your time into process goals, not wild dream outcome goals or meticulous performance goals. You see a ton of people do this kind of stuff. The overthinker, okay, will track tons of variables and not train hard enough or not diet properly. The bro will have outcome goals like, man, one day I'm gonna be the next Arnold, but doesn't track anything for performance, nor does he try super hard in the gym or uh, at the dinner table, right? So it, no, there's no bonus for having really exorbitant outcome goals, and you can measure whatever the hell you want if you're not process goaling properly, if you're not moving the needle physically, then it doesn't really matter what you're measuring or what you want to happen. You have to do the actual things. To finish this out, if I were a betting man, if I were a gambling man, and you gave me a choice, I would take by a long shot a person with pretty hazy outcome goals. For example, someone who you're like, hey, like, what do you want to do in the sport of bodybuilding? And they're like, I don't know, like, I want to be super lean and jacked and, and, and maybe compete. Like, that's not exactly like, oh, I want to be Mr. Olympian in the year 2031. <laughs> like, that's definitely not that, right? It's very, very hazy. And maybe not so regular performance goals, like, Sometimes they go a while without really testing their strength uh, and they just like, you know, go in the gym and hit it hard. But if they're nailing the process goals, 
I'm betting on that person, the person that eats the meals, that doesn't skip training. You show me a motherfucker that gets his meals in and gets his training in and hits it hard week after week after week, that is the person nine out of 10 times who's going to be successful and actually end up nailing outcome goals that the other person didn't get. And the other person, the other archetype is a person with pie in the sky outcome goals, like I'm going to be Mr. Olympia, which is nothing wrong with that goal as long as your process is set in, in motion, right? And a lot of people have super strict performance goals, like I mean, measuring, like I make sure I go you know, always train to failure at the end of every mesocycle just so I can measure and compare my results. And ooh, my tricep extension went down a little bit, my skull crusher went up. And what does that mean? That's all good and well, again, as long as your process is really set in motion. So by a million times, I would choose someone more process oriented versus performance and outcome, especially outcome oriented. Outcome goals are sexy. In a large portion of society and in social media and multimedia, they were really cool to talk about, right? People love to talk about that shit. It's inspiring when athletes were like, I wanted to win the Olympics ever since I was six. Like, wow. It's not as fun to be like, so what's your typical day like? Like, when I wake up, have a protein shake, choke that down. I try not to throw up. Then I go train for two hours. Then I have another protein shake, try not to throw that up. Like, yeah, that's kind of cool, but more for us nitty gritty people that actually train. Regular folks who end up setting fitness goals, the way they consume sports and fitness media, they're obsessed with outcomes stuff. And people talk about their goals all the time. Like the people you know at work that are trying to get fit, what are they always talking about? Like, I'm going to lose 15 pounds. Or what do you think? Like, can I gain muscle? Rarely are they talking about like, hey, day to day, how should I be eating? Because I know it's different. They talk about even diets in terms of outcome goals. Like, I'm going to do the keto diet. Like, it seems like you're giving yourself a gold star for trying a diet. Like, you can talk about whatever you want. Are you going to actually do it? Right? One of those guys in our example the person who focuses on process goals is probably getting jacked and strong and lean. And the other is probably just writing checks to himself he can't cash if the process isn't there. So should you have outcome goals? Totally, but they're not super important. Even if they're hazy, that's totally fine. Should you have performance goals? They're more important. You should have them. They should be regular and objective, but they don't need to be super elaborate. Should you have process goals? You can't live without them. They are the motive force behind changes in fitness. Folks, Give that some thought. See you next time for the next lecture.